You are listening to the Andrew and Troy show. Now, uh, Troy. Yes, Andrew. My, our guest today. Well, <laughs> my Facebook friend. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, she's a um, interior designer. A fashionista, a singer, uh, a furniture and decor designer, uh, a TV personality for the block and selling houses Australia. And look, she's also a book author. She is the amazingly beautiful Shana Blaze. Welcome, Shana. Oh, I can just go now. You've said everything I'll leave. (laughs) I was going to say, did I miss anything for that intro? Oh, probably not. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Do you have any spare time? No, none whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm, I'm doing a setup for the Den Furniture Fair and um, in Melbourne, and um, things went a little bit pear shaped. And the stands don't always go how you want them, and so we were there till uh, 11:30 last night, and we're back here at six o'clock this morning. So. <sighs> It's, you know, it, it, that, that's what happens. That, that's what you do. Should, should we ask <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> oh, just, you know, a few colours didn't quite go how they're meant to. Even, you know, oh, as a oh. person that works for Taubman, the colours don't always work out right for me either. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that humanises everything. It makes it re- people realise that, you know... The professionals can get some of it, you know, sort of wrong, but it's all about tweaking and fixing it in the uh, end. Look, colour mixing in paint is not yes. an easy job. No. Um, no. Before this radio gig, I actually used to work in paint shops. Um, oh, the, so you'd know all about it. Look, I know all about it. The, the, the family, <laughs> the, the Murphy family, we, we own a chain of paint stores up in Sydney, and, yeah. um, and it, it's, it is an art form, mixing paint. Yeah, look, you know, you know, I mean, the formulas are so tight, especially when mm. you're going to, you know, quarter strength. And, you know, the formulas are made for like a four litre. And then once you start going down to a sample pot, well, what comes it. out of the sample pot won't 100% be reflective. It's got to be as close. And then, as you know, say, oh, it looks great at my friend's house, but not at my house. And then you go, well, that's because of the reflections of your floor and your artwork <laughs> and yeah. the daylight and the nightlight. And, 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 and what else is in the room? Like, oh, look, we used to get that all the time. It doesn't look the same as what it did on the colour chart. It's like, well, that's a different, f- like, and also, like, the, the paint is made up from, uh, like, about, eight or 12 different colours yeah. and, and print is made up of four different colours so they're never going to match exactly. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. And that's why, you know, you, when you paint something, you've got to, you've got to do it as, as test all the time. You can't sort of look at it as true and just get one pot and go and paint your whole mm. house and go, hmm, whoops, doesn't yeah. look that great and then you sit with a mistake for the rest of your life because you, it was so exhausting the first time. And, and the measurements on the paint tint machine aren't... That, you, know, they, they, you get down to a quarter, and sometimes you need an eighth or something to get down to those sample pots mm, of a measurement, right. and it's just it's impossible. So oh. people out there, just calm it down a little bit. <laughs> 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 <Too funny. laughs> uh, so we'll we'll go with the selling houses Australia, which basically brought you to fame. Really great well, show, yeah, loved that's it. The beginning of the TV world, What's yeah. That? Yeah, I've been watching it from the very beginning. Yeah, just just quietly. Shay, now, so, you're, um, so you're one of the originals, go, yeah. go girlfriend. Oh yeah, he, he's major girl fanning at the moment. Oh, very much so, <laughs> very much so. And like when it started, when we we, uh, we met last year at the uh, the Selling Houses Australia. Uh, what was it? The road show? The road show, the convention. The, convention uh, the, Center. Um, the Grand Finds Live. Yes, yes, that's the yeah. one. And yeah. uh, oh, I I was like. Fanning then and like fanning now. It was, it was into- <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> <laughs> what What are some of the most frequent mistakes people make when they're trying to renovate or style their own homes? Look, there, there's quite a few sort of faux pas that people do in, in the fact of like the things that they don't do as well. It's like hiding things or people won't notice that. So if you turn around and say to something that, oh, you know, I'll just move that there, no one will notice. Mm-hmm. It's come out of your mouth. 100% someone will notice. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to notice it, someone else is going to notice it. Because most people have blinkers on in their own home. Yeah. Um, so that's a big mistake of doing things, um, forgetting to do things that you should be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is, you know, just concentrating on one room. Like we always have this focal point and say, well, you know, this is the selling tool for the whole house, either, you know, the kitchen or the bedroom or yeah. something like that. But you have to make the rest of the house stand up to it because there's nothing worse than... Um, 
presenting two or three rooms that look fantastic and the rest of the house hasn't been done. Mm. And it has that sense of disappointment. And I know in selling houses we have to do that sometimes, but you still can spruce it up with a bit of paint or, you know, just changing the bedspread. You know, you've just got to bring it up that little bit um, rather than just sort of making half the house look amazing and the other half looking derelict. Mm. Yeah, very no, much. Nothing so. like a good lick of paint. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> the tone and the formula. <laughs> yeah. uh, with, with selling houses, what's probably the worst place you've worked on? Oh God, there's been a few. <laughs> yeah, because you've got you've Roy got the, your hoarders and, and you've got hoarders. You've got people. Yeah, well, Roy oh. the hoarder was really bad because he actually had seven lawnmowers inside the house. What? Yes, so that was interesting. To, to see your face when you walked in, well, when when Andrew took you in in your yeah. in your hazmat suit, oh my god, and your heels hilarious. was yeah. hilarious. You know what the funny thing is also is that Andrew has a sinus condition and can't smell that well. So he couldn't smell it, but we could smell it as we're walking up the driveway. And um, it was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. (laughs) And so I'd have to say that one was pretty bad. The other one was... um, Look, it, look, I'm going to say it was bad, but it was still one of my favourites. It was a place called Kedron. Um, it was a Queenslander, like not this series, but the series before. You could see through the floorboards. Every wall um, had to be changed, moved or tweaked. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those ones where you walk in and you just know that you're going to have to completely change the floor plan to make it work. And when um, you know all the buyers come through, they're not even going to notice, other than if it flows really well, I've done my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have have you had any um you know uh, not pleased clients with your work? Um, in real life or with selling houses? Both. Um, yeah. Look, you know, you can't always get a hundred percent strike rate. I, I did have one client that, um, honestly, no matter what I did, wasn't going to be right. And I was over in London, and I'm um, getting all these phone calls from my assistant, going, "Well, she does. She wants to bring back the rug. She wants to bring back the." <laughs> the lamp, she wants to bring back the table and just said, look, just give her a check and just take everything back. No matter what we change, we're going to go through this three times. So, you know, in the end, I wasn't sure whether it was me or her, but it was just best to go, are you happy if I replace everything? She goes, yes, okay, let's both walk away. So, you know, sometimes you have to learn to cut your losses sometimes Mm -hmm. and you can't please everybody. Um, So that that was a private client. And with selling houses... um, Look, I think I think they all come around in the end. There was there was one there was one couple where I think she hated everything I did, but she understood it. And that was um, oh my god, it was really early in the in the game. It might have been the first or second series called Runaway Bay, mm-hmm. and it was about this couple. He was actually a real estate agent, and um, she was, you know, she was a really strong woman, and I had like. Kermit Green, yellow, green that was going to go in their kitchen. Oh, and yes, I remember this yeah, one. Yeah, and she hated it with a passion. Mm-hmm. And no matter what you did, you, you, she'd say, yeah, that looks fantastic. I hate the green. It's <laughs> yeah. a different room. And then by the end of it, she got it because, you know, we put the white with it and we put blonde yeah. timber and it had that sort of, you know, beachy look. And she said, oh, yeah, look, I get it. Still mm. hate it. So, you know, you just got to cop it sometimes. <laughs> we are chatting with Shana Blaze here on the Andrew and Troy Show. We'll continue our chat right after this. Welcome back. You are listening to the Andrew and Troy Show as we chat with Shana Blaze. Andrew. Yes. Shana's book. Yes. Her book, uh, Shana Blaze, Design with Colour and Style. Amazing book. I absolutely love the pictures in it. Yes. Thank you. It's styled so well. I wish I could do that. (laughs) What what are some um, ageless styling tips that you've got? Look at the heights of the room. I think that's probably what the biggest thing is, Mm. that you've got to actually look at all the different levels that you would have something that's at eye level and then just a little bit below. So you look at, you know, sofa tables are one of the biggest things that, you know, you can have that would sit behind a couch or up against the wall that you can actually put things at eye level along with artwork and then your coffee tables and side tables. So Mm. if you can sort of group that that eye level and the next level of styling as a group, it Mm. really sort of gives you lots of layers in a room and you can do that in a bathroom, you can do it in a bedroom, you can do it in a lounge room. Mm. So you just need to create some layers Mm. um, for, for styling, um, to, just to get that 
finished look. Because yeah. I, I think too many people try and spread it all around the room. If you cluster your styling just, you know, one sort of element in a corner and then sort of um, take it down, as I said, in, in two different levels, mm-hmm. it'll actually make the room feel, feel more full than spreading everything all the way around. I, I have a tip when it comes to coffee tables, uh, and, and, and I, I, I'm sure you could use this, Shana. <laughs> I'm um, very excited because, you know, you learn something every day. Yeah, look, black and yellow, bright yellow, uh, painted stripes on the corners of coffee tables, ideal. <laughs> yeah, that's great for people who are klutzes. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you've nailed me. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a klutz, I've got bruises all over me. <laughs> <laughs> In in your in your first book, you go through like the pairs of three when it comes to putting decor out. Yeah, and um, can you explain a little bit about the reason behind that? Okay, it, it comes down to formal and informal. So when you put something in pairs, it creates a formal look because it becomes like bookends. And so if you want to create a formal look, you know, putting something that's matching either side of a console or either side of a fireplace will give you a very formal look, like candles or vases or something like that. If you want to create something that's more relaxed, you do a group of three and you sort of stagger them in different heights. And that just gives an area just to create a focal point. Now, you can add to that. You can go up to seven. Okay. If you start hitting nine, I think you, you, you know, you're going over the top <laughs> yeah. there. But you, know, you can go three, five or seven and do it in clusters of different shapes. So it could be a lamp, it could be a vase, it could be some flowers, it could be books. And that can make up your five or your three. It doesn't have to be three of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that help? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does. Uh, when it comes to uh, matching and, and finding colours to put in your room for paint and, and, and for your, your decorations... How how do you sort of mix all that up to make it look the way you do? I mean, you make it look so easy. Yes. Oh, come on. You, you do. <laughs> oh. You really do. You make it look so easy. You just oh. go in there and go, oh, I'll put a throw there and, you know, <laughs> put some vases well, over there. How do you pick all the colours that will sort of fit in with each other? Well, that was that's, that's one of the reasons I wrote um, that book is, like, colour. Yeah. But people trying to work out combinations. So you, there's a couple of basics you can do, like warm colours. If you work with warm colours like, you know, reds, oranges and yellows, they'll always work together. Cool colours like greens and blues and mm-hmm. cerises and, uh, sorry, um, chartreuse and all that will always go together. Then when you start mixing the warm and the cool, that's when you can have a bit of a problem. So always start with a base palette. Yeah. So if you start with warm colours that you love, then start adding a bit more onto that. And if it doesn't work, you do trial and error and take out. So to, to me, that's one of the simple, simplest ones to get people going with mixing colours. Mm-hmm. What, what are some of the colours that are in this season? Look, there's, there's a whole range. Like, we, we've still got sort of the chartreuse yellow and, and, and a bit of green going in. But pastel sort of, you know, a heart back to the 80s, you know, pistachio and salmon, they're sort of, they're nicer versions. They really are. Like, you know, salmon and um, green were in the, you know, the design world when I started and it was pretty awful. Um, <laughs> but there's nicer versions at the moment. There's some of them that are still going a bit too salmon that yep. I, I don't think will stay, but there's a beautiful sort of um, a tangerine salmon that I think is absolutely stunning that I think will sort of hang around for a bit longer. But the real, the real sort of salmon, mm, maybe just this thing. Yeah. <laughs> All this tangerine salmon and, and pistachio. I'm a little bit hungry. Yeah, hungry. Making me hungry. Uh, I'm telling you, <laughs> I always get hungry when I look at interiors. <laughs> we are chatting with Shana Blaze here on the Andrew and Troy show. Right back after this. Thanks for tuning in. We're chatting with Shana Blaze all about the fashion and the design world. Andrew, Shana's yes. got a you got a challenge. For I, Shana. Do, I do. I do. I have a I have a client challenge. Now, I I I've only ever designed two places in my life. Mm. So yes. It's a one bedroom apartment, which is the first one and I sold that. And now I'm designing my parents' place. Pretty much yep. finished that. And now I've got a friend. Let's just call him my boyfriend. <laughs> Let's just. <laughs> Let's just call him my boyfriend. You know that yet? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell him. Um, so he, this is the brief he gave me. He would like me to update his kitchen. Um, so he lives, it's a North Bondi apartment that overlooks the beach. Right. He wants a beach house feel. He also that could be anything. Oh, I know. Yeah. Just it, throw some sand in there. Exactly. You're fine. <laughs> he he he's he's very. He wants it to be very gothic. His favorite colors what? are black and purple. 
But he wants it beachy. But he wants how it beachy. You, how do you... What sort of brief okay, is this? you know what the answer to that is? <laughs> yeah. A stormy sea. There's nothing better than a stormy sea over the beach. So you can make it look like a thunderstorm over the sea. Yeah. And go, you know, if he loves purple and black, you can do smoky greys. You mm. can do beautiful glints of um, Ooh, silver yeah. like a, a lightning bolt. Yep. And um, that will give... And then you can actually just introduce a little bit of white and a little bit of um, sort of really light grey mm-hmm. and um, I'm getting really serious because this can work. <laughs> so you make it a stormy beach, you don't make it a, um, a beautiful beach that you go kick the sand on. Right. Oh, what, what, are, the, what are, t- are the types of styling tips? Would, what sorts of things could I put in there? For the kitchen? Yeah. Um, the gothic and the purple, mm-hmm. um, I, I, would, I would say the purple for um, the accessories like bowls and things like that. You can actually, you know, I don't know when you can get a toaster in purple, but a to- purple toaster would look <laughs> Pretty amazing, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> yeah, and, and I would actually sort of do it tonal blacks and charcoals, and you know, you, you could make it really moody, but lots of really good lighting, like lighting under the, um, sorry, under the overheads, and Over, you could do yep. some strip lighting and things like that. And I think that's what's going to bring it alive. And um, but yeah, gothic and beach, yeah, what's, really two that normally go together. <laughs> what's your your opinion on um, uh, the the cupboards being glossy or matte? Look, at the moment, it, it's, it's, it's all about matte. Mm-hmm. If you go too matte, it shows up the finger marks. So you've got to be really careful not to go sort of like a chalky matte. Yep. Um, but but I've, I've had matte in my kitchen for probably 10 years, so I, I hung on to it long enough that it came back to fashion. <laughs> like everything. <laughs> Look, matte will, nev- matte, will, just burn, matte will never go out of fashion. No. no I, I hate no. gloss. Look, glossy, look, glossy is great. High gloss really only works when it's very modern. If you've got high gloss in... You know, sort of something that's a little bit older style. It'll actually look like it's very dated. It'll look, it'll yeah. look very nineties. Yeah. yeah. So if it's high gloss, it has to be a very minimalist type look. Easy to clean, and you know, it wears better than matte. But oh, just look wise, mm. gloss is just horrid. Yes. Yeah. Look, you know, a bit of medium gloss is good. Yeah. It, it's when you go for that high gloss. The high gloss is actually quite high maintenance. Oh, it's, and it just looks terrible. Just the, <laughs> the reflective surfaces, especially on your your uh, architraves and skirting boards. I yeah, know, I, like it's all that's like the one I won when working in the paint industry. We're always told you know high gloss on on you know the architraves because it gets kicked and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Looks terrible yeah. though. It looks terrible. A, a guy came up with that one. <laughs> yeah. A straight guy at that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they, they did rule the world for a while. But they we did. That lately. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that, that's all really great advice. And now I can go back to my client. Yeah. And, <laughs> and give, give my, my, my advice. Are, are you going to tell him that you got some advice from a professional? Well, yeah, considering he absolutely <laughs> loves Shana as well. So well that's true. I'm, I'm great. <laughs> Next time she's in Sydney and I've done the kitchen, you're coming over, Shana, so you yeah. can see my work. <laughs> so I've got some orchestral music going off in the background here. Oh, oh beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, now, the block. I love it. My parents love it. I don't know who doesn't love the block. It's been around for many seasons. There's yeah. been, there's was a lot of rumour uh, at the beginning of last season's block that contestants weren't doing a lot of their own builds and a lot of their own styling. Um, oh, yeah. Didn't know about that rumour. Yeah, yeah, was <laughs> like they they're getting they they're getting stylists in to style it for when they do the the big reveals. Oh. Um, well, what? you've learnt something I haven't. <laughs> I, I haven't heard that rumour, so like, I can't quite comment on uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll How get interesting if that was true. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. When you go in there, you, you obviously you're in there to, to judge style and, and yeah. look. Um, over the, the the last couple of seasons, has there been any any favourite for you? Really? Yeah. Look, look, I must admit it. It has been a lot of hit and miss. The yeah. last two series, some have been absolutely fantastic, and some of them I, I've, I've probably thought, "Yeah, please get a professional in for goodness' sake." <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it has been quite quite a hit and miss, and and um, look, I think that makes it interest cause, mm. interesting because interesting because everyone can't be amazing; they're not all professionals, so no. you know you, you you take that into account. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I just think there's so much advice out there, and even the shops that they go into offer styling advice. But you know that they should really listen to a lot of people that are around them that are giving them advice, mm-hmm. or could be me, <laughs> um, <laughs> and take those things on board and stop taking things offensively. Yeah, it's yeah. just like when you get comments, it's just like, okay, it's not working. Here's something that you can do and, and try and take it on board. And I think that's probably what was the most frustrating thing the last couple of series is you're giving this advice, but, you know, 
people pay me money for and yeah. not listening to it. Do you, do you ever get flack from, from viewers on your social media about some of your decisions? Oh, God, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, as a judge, not everyone's going to agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, they keep. You know, there are things that are personal opinions because, you know, who, in the end, people who buy this house, it's a personal style. But the thing is, I'm a professional and coming from a professional angle. Yes, yep. it is personal on some things, but I'm not actually giving a personal opinion in my critique. It's always a, a professional opinion. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, the difference is, like, you've got four houses side by side that are completely different. So you've got four different markets that you're actually, um, you know, selling to. Whereas selling houses, we're selling one house. We yeah. have to adhere to a particular market because we can't, you know, we can't afford the competition next door um, for someone to buy that house because we won't get four buyers in a row. We've only got one. Yeah. So, yeah, look, it's, you know... It is a bit tricky, but um, the styling of of what people do on the block um, will be interesting this season that comes, the next season that comes up, because, um, you know, the people that didn't do really that well every week um, Mm. won a lot of money. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it it, it comes down to that people are buying these apartments because they're, one, in a fantastic position. Mm. They've got something that a lot of places in the area that, you know, work well. And the styling at the end didn't get them the $900,000, but it's going to get them the money during the competition to get their leg up for the next stage and the next stage. Yeah. Uh, one final question for me about the block. Yeah. Is, is the clash between you and D actually real? Or is it just okay. put on? We've only stood in the room once together. Yep. So when you clash with somebody, it's very hard, you know, when people say you're clashing all the time, well, yeah. we'll never see each other. <laughs> um, a lot of it is quite one way. Yep. So, um, you know, I, I walk away. I don't get involved in things like that. If somebody says things about me, um, I have no control over that. And I don't have to retaliate because that's their problem, not mine. Exactly. Exactly right. Shana Blaze, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today here on the Andrew and Troy Show. Final plug, where can people uh, buy your brand new amazing book? Well, at the moment, um, it's in all my bookstores. Don't go to the bad ones. <laughs> and- <laughs> where are the bad ones? Exactly right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Those bad ones have already gone. Yeah. Um, and, and online, like Penguin, Bookworld, Booktopia, you can buy them online there. Shana, thank you so much for joining the us today. Thank you. Show on OX Gold. We're going to be driving you home.